Howdy chaps, welcome back to another episode of Introducing Ash Direct from the Void Guys. Now, as we talked about yeah, last week, uh, the week before, and in our presentation of Idea Scale, um, we're so happy that all you guys have voted and we have got a new topic based on the votes. So Matthias, what are we going to be doing? Asterisk AMI, it was the most wished feature. And first of all, thank you all for joining Ideascale, Pascom.Ideascale. It really worked yeah. great. We have a lot of vo votes there and members who submitted new ideas. Yeah. So and we were impressed. I, lost, I got an email from Ideascale at the beginning of the week saying I'd lost a badge because I hadn't, um, I'd only voted for things but not put a new idea in. Yeah. I'm a bit disappointed. Yeah. But I thank you, thank you guys for putting new ideas in. Uh, anyhow, um, moving on, so we're going to start on the Asterix Manager interface. Um, and sorry guys if uh, Matthias and I sound a bit bunged up, we both got <laughs> colds. Um, so yeah, uh, we're going to plow on uh, ahead with the Manager interface. So Matthias, what is the Asterix Manager uh, interface and what does it do? It's um, the easiest explanation, it's, it's a kind of remote control. Okay. So like for your TV or something, you can remote control asterisk. Cool. What we did in the past already was we used asterisk call files, can you remember? Yeah, I do, yeah. Um, asterisk call files are something where you put a file somewhere and mm -hmm. then asterisk does something. Um, this is okay for many scenarios, mm -hmm. but it has a lot of drawbacks. The first is, it's fire and forget. So I cannot control the process. I yeah. just put the file there and then whatever happens, what is defined in the file. Maybe it retries, maybe it reaches somebody, maybe mm -hmm. not. I can maybe um, track this in a kind of dial plan mm -hmm. where I just um, connect you and a piece of dial plan to count if I call somebody if it worked, if not, mm -hmm. and make some database entry. So yes, there is uh, ability to do so, but you cannot control the process. Okay, fair enough. The next thing is you have to put the file on the machine, so you have to copy a file somewhere, mm -hmm. so with SCP or something. Yeah. So if you're on another machine, then you have to ensure that you can do a file transfer. That's not... Yeah, that's true natural that you can do this. <laughs> um, so you have to uh, install um, certificates for SSH or something like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, then you cannot read something, some of the states of asterisk. Mm -hmm. So you just put the file there, yep. then it dials, and you don't have a clue what asterisk does. And you cannot react on a special situation. Maybe every time if you call me, I want to ring a bell. I, I don't know. Make a database entry. Put it to the monkeys. Yes. <laughs> James called me again. Counter. I, I, I don't know. Something right. like this. So you cannot do something. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot react on something. Okay. Um, so the advantage is asterisk IMI is real time and you can read and write every single event. That's so, quite handy. Yes. Right. On the one hand, it's handy. On the other hand, it's a lot of information okay. um, because there are a lot of events on Asterisk if you yeah. have a look at. Mm -hmm. um, but you can read them and you can uh, put new events in there or new commands in there. Okay. Um, how does this work? Uh, you get an IP connection, so you open a port, which is normally not open. So mm -hmm. Asterisk AMI is shut down because of security reasons. So we will per default, that it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, gotcha. Per default, it's not very secure, so it's, mm -hmm. um, it's deactivated by default, which is a good idea because yep. everybody could remote control your Asterisk if you do something wrong. That could be fun. Yes. <laughs> and you can um, make it relatively secure. I will show how this works, but mm -hmm. uh, one thing you should keep in mind, it's dangerous if you do the wrong thing. I will explain later why. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's it, how it, it works, and that's how the connection is okay. done. So normally you um, would make, for my demonstration, I would make a Telnet connection. Mm -hmm. um, and then just see what happens. Okay. So Telnet is per default unencrypted, so you see it's very mm -hmm. interesting. You can secure it, as I told you, but to 
get into it, it's easy to use Telnet. But right. don't do this in a productive environment. Then another thing I have to say, um, you are not communicating by Telnet or something with um, the API, so you don't type something in. Okay. Normally you have a script or you have a program which mm -hmm. is talking to the API, to the asterisk AMI. Um, and therefore a, a lot of pre-built libraries for your preferred programming language. Okay. So there is a kind of yeah abstraction. So you don't need to know every single command or every single event. That's quite handy. Um, and uh, you just use the programming language you like and use the libraries which are available for your programming language. Cool. But to understand everything, Mm -hmm. We start from scratch, <laughs> as always. As always, and we go in there, we, we dive in there with Telnet and see what happens. And okay, try then, to then take it away. Anything. Yes, but that's it for this tutorial. Okay, fair and enough. Then next time around, we'll come back with yes. the, uh, less theory, more practice. Right. Maybe. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, then, thanks very much for watching. Until next time, see goodbye. You.